Duncan, you got company. All the Heat Nation, so happy for you. First, let's talk about from the team's perspective. Coming into this game without Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, we heard from your coach earlier tonight. It was all about just winning this one game. You guys were so locked in. How, how good does this win feel? Oh, it feels great. Um, you know, obviously, we knew it was going to take a big-time effort coming into it with some guys out and uh, a great opportunity for other guys to step up. So, you know, we just knew whatever it, whatever it took to get a win, and, you know, we're thankful to be getting on this plane uh, with a W. Duncan, you got off to a great start, knocking down a couple threes, but then mixing up your game as well, putting the ball down on the floor, drawing fouls, getting to the line. Uh, really, really a well-rounded overall performance for you. I uh, appreciate that. Just trying to be aggressive. Um, you know, take shots when they come to me and, uh, you know, attack closeouts, trying to, you know, mix up my game a little bit, not be so reliant on that three-point line. But, uh, you know, credit my teammates, you know, found me in good spots, and I just try to be aggressive. You know, 24 points tonight, Duncan, a season high. You, know, you, you came out off two games where you had missed 15 out of 16 shots. It happens. Ooh. All great shooters go through slumps. How difficult was it for you mentally and emotionally, and how much strength did you gain from the confidence that P.J. Tucker and all of your teammates and all of your coaches sh showered you with yeah you know i mean it's it's a challenge um but you know that's what competition at, at the highest level is about uh you know kind of getting your bell rung and, and seeing if you can respond so i got a bunch of guys in the locker room coaching staff teammates that uh, are just doing nothing but but showering me with, with confidence so for me you know, i just try to lock in on doing my job with jimmy and, and bam out duncan you guys have you know, rallied in a big way, had to go deep into your bench, even young Omar Yurtsevin getting a chance to play tonight. Uh, you know, speak to the level of uh, competition and, and camaraderie this group has, the depth that you're you're showing right now with this bench. For sure. You know, we, we said it before the game, you know, next man up, great opportunity for some guys. Uh, so happy for O. He deserves it. You know, he's put in so, so much time, and we've all seen that. So, you know, for him to get out there and kind of get comfortable and, and you know, see his abilities, uh, you know, translate to the floor was, was great to see. We're happy for him. Duncan Robinson, we're all happy for you. Before you take the headsets off, good luck to your Michigan Wolverines in the oh, Big yeah. Ten Championship game <laughs> big, here in Indiana. Tomorrow. Big one in this city. Go Blue always. Whatever it takes. You mentioned that a lot. You talked about anyone and everyone. We saw that in the power rotation. How satisfying was it to get so much from so many at a time when it was all needed? Uh, yeah, this is truly a, a collective team win you know, tonight. Um, you know, Indiana had been playing really well. Um, they've had some tough losses, you know, going down the stretch. And this historically is always a tough place for the Miami Heat uh, to try to get a win. And, and we knew we were going to have to have a lot of guys contributing and putting their fingerprints on this game. Um, and that's what you saw. Um, you know, Kyle and Duncan really set the tone at the beginning of the game. You know, got us uh, going. Um, but then uh, those key situational minutes, it started with UD. Uh, you know, Gabe and, and Caleb uh, were terrific, uh, particularly defensively. Uh, and then Omir was uh, was very good in, in the second half. And, and from our perspective, it's always nice uh, to see, you know, young players that have been putting in the time. Nobody ever gets to see it. It's always behind the scenes. Um, but I know how hard these these young guys have been working um, to prepare for these moments. Um, they always have it echoing in their ears what UD says. You have to prepare to be ready, and then you have to stay ready so you are ready right. when your number is called, and, and, and that's what you saw tonight. Those were all important minutes, um, and they all contributed to the win. How heartening was it to see the first th two go through for Duncan that, okay, that's out of the way, now you can sort of play your game? Look... You know, 82 game seasons are long. They can get noisy. Um, all the the, the storylines and um, you know the ups and downs of of everybody's emotions uh, about uh, different things. Uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the season, Duncan's shooting percentage will be, you know, right where it is. Uh, but when you're in it in in the storm. Um, you know, everybody tends to, to overreact to it. Um, he has a responsibility, you know, to us and to our offense, and, and he's been generating really good triggers for us. Uh, and he has to st stay with that um, because we're getting good things out of that. And then eventually, like, you'll see nights like tonight where, of course, uh, the ball's going to go. He he's puts way too much time uh, in 
for it not to happen. Um, but on the nights where it's not four for seven, uh, he still creates great offense for us, and the gravity that he uh, creates for our offense uh, is always really helpful. And then that crazy late play where it was clear you were probably going to challenge at some point. P.J. maybe let the motions get the best of him. The, the explanation we got was you can come on the court if you challenge, but you can't come on the court and then challenge. What was explained to you, and, and, and sort of how did that happen, that you wanted with two, uh, two technical fouls on a play that clearly was going to be a challenge? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, you know, James was just reading it by the letter of the law, and I get it. You know, that, that's, that's a tough call. Um, I'm going to be calling Byron, though, tomorrow. I want my money back uh, on that. Uh, it was just one of those situations where everybody was wondering what's going on. It, it is a, a timeout. Um, I was challenging it. It's on the far end. I've also been on the other uh, end of that where you can't get officials' attentions. But it, this was, I don't know, it seemed like common sense that uh, everybody was just kind of converging to half court. And then last one for me. Um, Omer's play, you, you had mentioned it briefly also, but... In summer league, he was one thing. He was a high usage player. It was all about him. Here was contributing. Just your thoughts on how he fit. He seemed like he fit right in, in the zone. And usually when you don't play a lot of it with other guys, it might be a little difficult. Your thought on how he he maybe made the zone for you guys at the end also. Yeah, I, he's been fully immersed into the Miami Heat development program. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Nobody gets to see that, so you don't get to see it a young player's progress. Um, our staff has seen it. The players have seen it. Um, and it's tough, you know, sometimes uh, for a young player in this league uh, on a team that has high aspirations uh, to prepare, uh, to earn the trust of veteran players, earn the trust of, of a staff. Uh, and the best way to do that is just to always be in there working um, and letting everybody know that you, you're preparing um, you know, for those moments, and and that's what he's been doing. Uh, and you can see his skill set; it is unique. He has great touch. Um, he has a great feel around the basket, and he's big. Uh, he gives us a, another big, big, uh, along with Dwayne, which uh, obviously now is is really important with um, with Bam being out. And to build off of that last game, it was uh, PJ Tucker and KJ Paul going a little bit smaller with the five when Dwayne wasn't in there today. You need to start, and then Omir stepping in there. What went into the switch? Was it matchup based? So how yeah. Did you go through with well, that? those two guys are very big. I mean, Sabonis is as physical as anybody in the league. Uh, Turner is seven foot <laughs> nine. I mean, he's big. So uh, um, that's not an indictment at all on KZ. KZ could very well, you know, have those kind of minutes, you know, tomorrow night. Uh, and that's where we are right now. When you have Jimmy and, and Bam and, and Markeith out, uh, you know, it's going to have to be a collective effort and could be different guys based on matchup or context or game. And then the third quarter, they cut the lead to three twice. Tyler immediately hits a three to get you guys back up the second one, starting your big run at the end of the third quarter, just and finding the moment again. Yeah, you have to be, you have to expect that in, in this league nowadays. Um, teams are going to come back and, you know, they, they, they showed some urgency and, um, you know, what What I liked in those moments of truth, those swing moments during the course of the game, we were much more intentional um, and less uh, random um, so that we could get the ball where it needed to go, and then you live with the results. And, and, and Tyler is, is one of our, our best uh, playmakers, facilitators, attackers, scorers, and, and we were able to get the ball to him and, and let him do his thing in, in those moments.